Welcome back to Absolutely PlayStation and Steam Gamers. My name is Benny. That is the man with the quaff of hair that that makes all the ladies swoon. Shake. Just one. Just one. Just <laughs> and that and that is everyone's Coda. favorite bearded internet waifu, <laughs> Coda. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did the hands, man. You did the hands. Yeah. Today? Well, I was swooning to Shank. <laughs> oh, you're swooning for Shank? Oh, geez, Shank. You got you got yourself everybody's favorite internet waifu hunter, Mr. Genshin. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to do a discussion. And so this discussion is actually stemmed out of one of many arguments Shank and I have had in which we were discussing the lore and stories to video games. And we were discussing how some are really good, some are very vague, some are very poor. And a comment that Shank made in which he said, uh, we were discussing about whether or not how long we would stick it out with Destiny, and he said, well, story, the story and lore of Destiny is so incredible, you could never leave it. I'm paraphrasing, but it's pretty much what you said, right, Shank? That's a good paraphrase, yeah. Okay, As I, I'll specify I did paraphrase, because that's not the topic of today, that argument. That argument would be a whole other discussion. Because I <laughs> countered with, Destiny is not doing a good job of handling its lore and story, which got us to discuss the different types of storytelling and the pros and cons versus both. So I want to go over that first, and then we're going to have a discussion about what you prefer, which you think is better, and the pros and cons of all of them, hence the point of our discussion. So <laughs> I have them listed here by a couple of different types, Okay. We have the lore and truly cryptic games. Now, I quantify these games as ones where they don't tell you jack. You're supposed mm -hmm. to infer through vague messages and actions of NPCs as to what is actually going on. And you're supposed to infer and kind of come to your own conclusions based on tooltips, notes, and creepy things. The two games that always come to mind when I think of storytelling in this manner, Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Because unless you've deep dived into the lore of those games, which is not presented in an easy to digest fashion, <laughs> as far as you're concerned, what the hell is going on? My brother, Andy, just played through Bloodborne and he got all three endings. And his exact response to me when I asked him, so what'd you think of Bloodborne's story was, I don't know, I think I'm a, I think I'm a tentacle monster now. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> So, to be fair, reading all the lore for Bloodborne, still don't know exactly what's going on. And that's my point. So that's one style of game. Very lore, very cryptic. On the exact inverse of that, the very straightforward plots, I've wrote down that we have things like Assassin's Creed, God of War, and Call of Duty. Those games don't like to put their plot anywhere but in your face. Like you, there's not, there's no cryptic notes to read. There's nothing. Uh, Call of Duty is a, just an action set piece movie. Uh, God of War was pretty straightforward. You're just trying to track down boy and what's going on with the history, but it was all given to you in a very easy to digest manner. Um, and Assassin's Creed, a lot of people would say, "Oh no, that's cryptic." It's really not. I've played them all. The plot yeah. just unfolds. Main, like there's nothing to discover. It's all just right there for you to go get, and they'll tell you very straightforward what's happening. You you could pick up any version of any of these games and understand exactly what's going from the get-go. <laughs> yeah. Right. There are twists, mm -hmm. but they're evident in the game, like exactly what's happening. So, and then, of course, we have the titles, which is where I think, I believe Destiny falls into, where they try their best to blend these two worlds. Um, I've got these written down as control, because they're all about having a very straightforward plot, but if you are willing to read everything, there's a lot more going on there. Nier is notorious for using transmedia through pl stage plays and additional books and things like that to infer more plot. Uh, Destiny loves to do very cryptic and creepy lore, and you have to discover it by looking at tooltips on weapons like Whisper of the Worm. But they also like to give you that very straightforward plot of there's the Cabal baddie, we're going over there to kill that thing. Um, Resident Evil. Very straightforward plot, kill zombies. But if you read all the notes about what's actually going on in these creepy houses, mm -hmm. you discover a whole different side of that story. And Pokemon, actually. It's always yeah. a very straightforward, go and beat the Elite Four. But if you read the Pokedex, you start talking to people. One that always comes to mind is Lavender Town. What's really going on with Lavender Town? You know, everyone's got theories and ideas. Um, 
so those are the three styles of games. And we can talk about each of these individually, where they, where they fail and where they succeed. And just to kind of kick it off, and we'll keep the Destiny discussion to a, a bit of a minimum of in our story here, because Shank and I have a tendency to talk about it for like an hour. My argument with Destiny, and the reason why I stated I don't feel they're doing a good job with their storytelling, is that Destiny from the get-go, at least, as, at least up until about Shadowkeep, loved it to do the method of, here's creepy, cryptic shit for you to figure out, and we're not going to explain any of it. Right. <laughs> and in the recent years, they have been going a little more straightforward with it. Like, okay, so creepy, cryptic stuff? Yeah, this is what it actually is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> To answer your first question of which kind of storytelling do I like, I think I like that like middle, like not too straightforward, not too cryptic. Because when you're too worried about storytelling not too worried about storytelling, but when you're focused just on the story, sometimes it can get in the way of gameplay. And I, I always want my game play to come first. I think for third person adventure games, it's much easier to be straightforward like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had a whole era think, in gaming where everything was a quick time event so that they could just tell you the story and not even try to give right. you anything. They were just like, Here's the story. Here's what's happening. <laughs> right. I think for, uh, especially for first person games, first person shooter games, it's easier to put some of that stuff off to the side and just say, hey, go shoot your gun. The counter argument to that is Call of Duty. That's very much just an action set piece run from one encounter and cutscene to the next. A um, Halo. Halo is a very straightforward storyline in general with a lot of transmedia to expand upon it, but you don't have to read it in the game. I, to the detriment of that, though, Halo 5 pretty much demanded that you had read some of the extended universe. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's what happened and, when Bungie left. We're just good. Right. <laughs> Halo uh, 1 through Reach was amazing. <laughs> I, well, even 4, you could hop into 4 pretty well. Yeah. And it catches you up. But 5 is where they kind of jumped the shark on that and tried to make all the extended media. Like, you, you don't even know who the main bad guy is unless you read a comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think Halo, like Halo Five, is how Destiny would be if it did it bad. I I think Destiny is doing an okay job right now. They well, do, and their, their like, current state. I do agree. I do agree. They like, figured it out finally. I think the pro the problem I think they have is they don't connect a lot of their story threads together too well, except for in like an armor description or something. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll connect something. But like Season of the Hunt. We got introduced to Crow, and the whole thing was us trying to work with Osiris and Crow hunting down Hive or whatever, shooting stuff. Uh, that ended in us freeing Crow from the spider. Then going into Season of the Chosen, we're working with Crow and Osiris, and there's a plot thread of us bringing Crow to like back into the fold of being like an accepted guardian because he looks like Aldrin Saw, but he's not Aldrin Saw. Right, right, and that that comes to a head where he saves Zavala, and now he's kind of more of an accepted guardian within this within the tower. He still can't show his face, but he's getting there. I I'm worried they're going to backtrack on keeping these threads connected because now we're dealing with Mithrax, and Crow's not going to be involved. Osiris isn't going to be involved. Zavala probably won't be involved. It'll be another side story that starts at the beginning of the season, ends at the next season, onto the DLC. <laughs> but Osiris is going to be involved, and so is the Helm. Osiris, we're not literally... ar we're not arguing about it about what's well, coming no, but... in the new season. It, it, no, it, right, right. So but I understand the problem that, but I think plot threads. The, the prop the problem that I feel that Destiny has run into versus taking that cryptic message because the reason why Destiny had to come out and say we are resolving the Witch Queen, the Witch Queen has been hinted at and cryptically dropped on us for four or five years. The problem, I think, versus Destiny versus like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, which do a very good job with the cryptic storytelling and having a weird, cohesive lore if you really want to deep dive, but it still stays cryptic and vague even after you've deep dived, is that they are one-and-done style games. I think the problem that Destiny runs into, trying to merge these two things, they're trying to cater to the Halo crowd, who just wants Master Chief drops in, goes to the end of the plot, defeats the boss, and we're done. That's your plot. Good aliens, bad aliens, we're done. 
That's a, that, there are there is an audience of Destiny that wants that. At the same time, they want you to be intrigued to stay with Destiny. Because if you were dropped in and you resolved every plot point, why would you return for the season to check in on Crow or Mirax or whoever, or Cyrus? You wouldn't, because you'd be like, it's done. Tell me the next time it comes out with a sizable chunk. You know, so I think the problem that Destiny has run into is the live service model works and doesn't work with this because up until about Forsaken, they were just throwing story beats at you. Hey, there's a bunch of witches. Hey, we got Hive over here. Hey, this is a Leviathan worm. Hey, these are Cabal and they're mad. That's Vex in darkness. Like, <laughs> like that's kind of how it all felt for Destiny 1 up until Forsaken, where they started to kind of go a, a little more linear with it. Then they were like, Dreamin' City! Creepy weird stuff! What's that gun? It's talking to you! Like, <laughs> it's kind of what... Once again, they kind of went back at track on that whole thing, but they were trying to keep you to keep coming back to check in on things. Part of the reason why a lot of his Final Fantasy XIV players come back is they've been doing that same thing w with a linear plot, but we've had a linear plot for eight years! And it hasn't ended. <laughs> so I, I think it's important that whenever there are these plot points that get brought up, even in, in the side lore, in the like IM descriptions and whatnot, that they're reflected within what you're actually playing. Yeah. Uh, an example, we're keeping on Destiny, I think maybe too long for what we were planning, but it's a, it's a good example. <laughs> uh, the, the Trials weapons right now all talk about how darkness guardians are using darkness and some of them are turning to be evil guardians and there's another guardian that's like hunting them down and stuff this is all stuff that is reflect that is a result of what we did in the main dlc beyond light and it's taking place right now in season of the chosen osiris is not able to deal with it because he's helping us with the cabal right and so saints kind of feeling like over pressure trying to keep guardians from killing each other and stuff like that and that's a big plot point that maybe should be resolved now that the cabal are dealt with we're not going to touch on it no we're going to move on to the next thing and i think yeah. that i think this is, it's the live service model that damages this style of storytelling with the destiny thing because there's, they're trickling this information. They're trickling it. They're mm -hmm. trickling. They want you to come back. They want you to see the next Guardian games. They want you to come back for Trials. A game like Resident Evil, while there is a lot of cryptic bullcrap going on in every game, it releases, it's out. That's the game. You can go do all that research. There's entire communities about all that research. Everyone's compiled it and put it together. And the game is talked about for six months, eight months. We all talk about with all this cryptic stuff. And then we're done. We move on. We go on to the next game. And it's, it feels like a complete package. While with Destiny, every time they answer one, actually finally answer something, they drip feed us three new threads that don't make any sense. And we're waiting for them to come to a conclusion on that now. And it's, it's that style of doing this cryptic storytelling of Dark Souls Bloodboard combined with giving us a very straightforward storyline like Call of Duty. But they want you to keep coming back. They want you to question things. It's it's the age-old debate of do you prefer movies or television? Yeah, that's what that's really what we're at. You're you're saying you prefer movies, where somebody like me, I prefer long-form storytelling, watching characters evolve over time. You're right. It, I'm sorry, we're going back to Destiny, but it's the it's, mean, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the weird bridging of the two of them, and it's the only yeah. live service, which makes it the one where it's easy to go, this failed, this worked. You know what I mean? Like, that's right. the problem. So you're saying, like, it was all mysterious all the time. Well, yes, when it started out, Destiny 1, everything was mysterious. But then they started answering questions. What are the but Hive? They, but they still what haven't are, really answered the half of their uh, questions. What are the Iron Lords? Then we start getting more information on the Cabal when Destiny 2 comes out. We start getting more information on the Awoken when Forsaken comes out. But once they start resolving plot lines, they then need to start introducing like new questions because otherwise, if everything's resolved, why would you come back? Right, but... Right, that's the live service issue. Yeah, that's the live service <laughs> issue. That's the problem with it because the issue is this, Shank. Do you like taking five years to get answers only to get more questions or do you like in that five-year time frame we have three resident evils come out with complete cohesive storylines that you can tell do you prefer to get dark souls one two and three in that time frame 
where there's a bunch of things for you to go crazy about and cryptically about and look into? Or do you prefer them to constantly keep you with the carrot on the stick? Because five years in, you got some answers. A lot of it's still left up in the air because they don't even know what they want to do with it. And they're just I leaving disagree. it out there. I disagree. Well, I'm asking and what I, you prefer. I, so, well, right. I prefer the carrot on the stick. But you're making it sound what? like preferring the carrot on the stick is a bad thing. Where No, I didn't I mean, say that at all. I'm asking which of these two you prefer. Right. right. They're introducing new mysteries, but they're different mysteries. Like... I mean, you were talking about, like, seasonal storytelling and being able to tie one thing to another. It's like, well, yeah, would you care about Mithrax if they hadn't built him up in the lore before? And yeah, it sucks that it's taken three years. I have zero idea who Mithrax is. That's that's not even me trying to mess with you. I have zero idea who that is. And I have played Destiny since launch. The problem with Destiny and the reason why they fell into this cryptic storytelling is they've been writing it as they go. And they're probably well in advance now, hence announcing the expansions. But it's notorious for Destiny came out and the story was scrubbed and they didn't have one. So they fell in they fell into cryptic storytelling because it's easier to go scrub it all and just imply shit. <laughs> I, I think Destiny's doing great now on how yeah. they're doing it. They started off bad and they've been they were bad for a long time up until like things had forsaken level whenever they started I think Shadow Keeps when they finally together. started having like a linear plot we were focusing mm. on because we Where finally found out about Eris and all her shit links together yeah uh, to give an example that's not Destiny thank you <laughs> uh, Pokemon yeah so uh, one example that comes to mind is the unknown the unknown were introduced in Gen 2 you could only catch them in one really ancient area called the Ruins of Alf yeah uh, and they were they were mysterious, and then they got a major role in the movie. Uh, not Pokemon two thousand. I don't remember. The Arceus is K. the same way with that, where he was like mysterious right. until he got right. like in a movie. <laughs> so, so they were introduced in in the movie, and they were they could bring things to life. They brought Entei to life, and he acted right. like this girl's father or whatever. Later on in Generation Four, they're introducing God in the Arceus movie. Whenever it like shows Arceus, it shows all these unknown floating around him. So it's like, oh, these are like, he uses the unknown to create things and whatnot. Then, in the remakes of the Gen 2, which is in Gen 4, you can take (laughs) Arceus to the ruins of Alf and he will, or the Sinjo ruins or something like that. It's another ancient ruins with unknown. The unknown will create other legendaries for you. They'll create Palkia, Dialga, or uh, Giratina, so it, it it relates something that was mysterious in the th- in the p- plot. They're literally called unknown. What do they do? Yeah, and it ties it into something later on that happens. There's lots of games uh, where like they'll bring up a question in their plot, and it'll be like, "Wow, what about this?" We're never gonna touch that though. Uh, games with great stories to me is something like Mass Effect. Mass Effect has an amazing linear example. story. Yeah. You you play through it. But then the codex, especially like Mass Effect 1 2 codex where like it talks to you and you get to just listen to it. It goes into every detail about how anything works. Mass Effect relays, here's everything, a six paragraph thing on how a Mass Effect relay works. <laughs> right. If you want it to be cryptic, it's fine, but the answer's there cuz the game mm. is out. We're not doing that later thing. Um, Nier is actually the example I wanted to bring up because Nier has a lot of extra media that answers questions. And Kaine is the best example. And I've already, I, I'm pretty sure you know the story of Kaine. And we had a whole other discussion where we discussed Kaine's reveals, which aren't in the game, but they're on the outside. Mm-hmm. So that's a great example of what, because the whole game, the reveal of Kaine is cryptic. It, why, why is she the way she was? What actually happened? And while they reveal what actually happened to her arm and her leg, they don't reveal what got her there. They even, they even make it more cryptic because they straight up tell you it's not the arm and leg. Something else went on. But they never straight up tell you. It's an all extra media and it's all in interviews. Is there more like in the near universe outside of just that one thing that's like not told directly in oh, the game uh, yeah. because there's a lot lots of, of stuff a lot there's of some... just all i've i saw in automata like you could actually get lore books that like told you what was happening yeah in but automata. but there's there's other stuff that like there's other questions that never get answered by the end because ever since dragon guard that series has been confusing 
Yeah, and then like the director will just go on stage one day and just talk about it, and like here's an here's what this meant all along, or it yeah. could have meant this, and then he'll go about other things. It's like. So, once again, though, so Nier is an example of a great game with a lot of cryptic stuff in it that doesn't get resolved. Like, Resident Evil resolves it in the one and dones. Pokemon, you get a little bit more information a little bit later. Destiny is stuck in the five-year live service pattern where they're trying to fill in gaps that they're missing. Um, but Nier likes to leave it intentionally vague so mm -hmm. you could fill in the gaps yourself. What about that kind of storytelling where it's like, mm, not important to this story. Interesting, though, isn't it? Like, that's kind of the way they do it. <laughs> there, That's been done well in some respects. It kind of makes the universe feel more alive. Yeah, there's that, just that, mysteries you'll never get an answer to effectively. I think it's a cop-out, personally. To not if ever gonna, give an answer? If you're going to introduce a question, then you should be able to give an answer. Uh, eventually. even if it, Even if you wait a couple installments to answer it. But just to be intentionally obtuse and just ask like big big philosophical questions and then just like let them sit i mean sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't i think it's all an execution it's a it's an execution definitely yeah well and, a, a and bad execution fair, example that isn't me crapping on destiny's way of storytelling and i mentioned it to you before shank but i'll retell this for the sake of this podcast and i'll mention it uh, for coda i played a game called hitchhiker which was about mm -hmm. five hours of you wake up in a car with a guy who picked you up as a hitchhiker and you begin to you don't know why you're there or what happened and you begin to find clues such as photos of yourself and a girlfriend you begin to find like little uh, items the people that are driving you seem to have more information than they're letting on it opens up a giant mystery as to what happened to your girlfriend where are you what is going on five hours into that game five hours into that game you don't get an answer you, the, you get to the ending where it's the girlfriend is maybe in a hospital, maybe not. You're on your way to a hospital, maybe not. And someone in your ear tells you to stop the car. You slam on the, you slam, you're, so you slam on the brake, you crash the car, the guy you're with vanishes, and the voice tells you to open up the box. And you open up the box and inside of it is a memory to teach you to cherish the memories that you have and don't question things. And they don't answer what's actually going on for five hours. <laughs> the point of the game is you're recovering your memories throughout the game so that the message is cherish the memories you have instead of questioning what's coming. And I looked it up. I didn't get a bad ending and there's a good one. There's no other ending. <laughs> so a uh, non-gaming example of like how to like structure lore uh, with, is with Tolkien. You can watch, you can, or you can read The Hobbit, you can read Lord of the Rings without needing the Cimmerillion. The Cimmerillion's there if you really want a deep dive into the lore of the world, but you can step into it, either of those stories, perfectly fine. The problem with some games is they just throw you in the deep water and they they just expect you to be able to follow immediately without any ex explanation on how anything works. Yeah. You, another, you need a, you need a build in basically. You want to know another example is uh final fantasy 15. I remember it got a mm. lot of yeah. flack early on because um, you had to watch Kingsglaive and there was a anime that you had to watch. Well, not even just that. They also never explained the, the battle of the, Espers or gods, whatever they were, it's Shiva, Ifrit, and all that. They were never fully explained. It was all vague storytelling. And they actually went in and patched it. Chapter 13 literally just exposition dumps into a cutscene what the plot is. Mm -hmm. I'm not even right. joking. That's where you can get it now. It's, it's, it's in the game finally. It feels mostly organic. If you know the story, though, you're like, oh, that's where that was just shoved in to tell me what the hell's going on. Like, <laughs> uh, Well, and then also they just cut out portions of the story to sell as DLC. Yeah. Would, like, you, you could tell it literally they just like picked picked it up and was like, nope, we you will pay for yeah. this later. And my favorite was so. the Gladios one where he's just like, all right, guys, I'll see you later. I have a thing to do. And you're like, you have a, you have a thing to do? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this is a right tangent, but 14, uh, 
it it does really well on its storytelling in that uh when Shadowbringers was coming out, they're like, Oh yeah, that guy from the Crystal Tower is playing a pretty big role here. We should force people to go and play that. Yeah. <laughs> they'll Shank take something that. that was a side story and be like, That's not a side story anymore. We're building on that. Go play it. Go go do yeah, that. Yeah, well, and that's what I said, because 14, while we've been doing the same plot now for eight years, it, like you said, Shank, it's like a, a television show in front of you. They have very successfully kept the threads tied up and not left it mysteries for very long. If we get a mystery, we get an answer relatively quickly. And we're, and they didn't start from the get-go like Destiny did where the story got scrapped and it was just vague everything because they didn't have a plot. It started with, here's the plot. And then they even took what they removed in 1.0 and made it plot. It's all plot. It's all coming together to probably one of the longest stories in mankind's history at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that's Square both does really well on making their stories linear and easy to follow and does really poorly on keeping their stories linear and easy to follow. Final Fantasy 13 trilogy is a, a really exa a good example of them poorly implying tons of stuff that gets answered three games later. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Hearts is fantastic in that every spinoff is canon. Yeah. And linear. If it's a spinoff, go they play don't... it. Memories of Melody, that's not just a beat game. Yeah. Well, listen, I might <laughs> make some plot. enemies here. I might make some enemies here, but Kingdom Hearts, they have no idea. Like, th there isn't a story. The issue with that is that they are just making things up as they go and then retroactively figuring out how they're going to fit it back together. I. I am a Kingdom Hearts fan, and I'll actually agree with you to some extent. Because I give Destiny flack for that, because it was notoriously pulled out at the beginning, and they've been adding in as they go, and they're filling it in. And it seems like they have a plan now for the next couple of years, which is why I'm excited, which is why these seasons do feel concurrent, finally. I, I, in my opinion, that's why they feel so connected, finally, because they mm -hmm. are going to an end point. Kingdom Hearts has, like, three villains, because the guy just wanted to keep making villains, and then went... And it's the body of this guy. <laughs> it's all this one guy. Yeah, it's all yeah. this one guy. But this one's cooler, so, isn't he? <laughs> I, I, I will agree to an extent except for... I, I think it's, it didn't start that way, right? Kingdom Hearts 1 to 2 and Chain of Memories in between is pretty linear, pretty yeah. easy to follow. And they don't, they don't he, really go too far off the beaten path with those two. And then Nomura got yanked off of Kingdom Hearts for a while. He, 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 he came into like keep pumping out stuff to keep that franchise alive but then he he went off and he he's done other things you know he's helped in 14 he's helped he did the 7 remake which took a lot of his time he did 15 yep. well he then got pulled off of that which he's very salty about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh but Nomura basically never got time to redevote to Kingdom Hearts so he's had to keep it alive while just making these spin-offs that he, he wants people to pay attention to. Right, he wanted to keep telling the story, but he had to keep the wheels spinning because you couldn't conclude the story on, like, a 3DS spinoff. Right. I get that. It's the same problem that actually they ran into with Assassin's Creed. I, I give it a lot of credit for being very linear, and it still is. But the story got stretched out, and you could tell, because I just played mm. Ezio's trilogy, they stretched out the story, and Brotherhood and Revelations weren't supposed to exist. And if you play all the way to the ending of Assassin's Creed 2 and you go right into 3, it could, in theory, still work. Because almost every plot thread that is opened up in Brotherhood is resolved in Revelations. Like, the only right. big reveal is like, oh, Des you, you do learn more background lore on the whole thing, but none of it is needed for the conclusion you're going to have in 3. A lot right. of the stuff that was revealed in Brotherhood and Revelations got, got mostly left hanging. It was loosely answered until origins where they started looping back the first civilization stuff because brotherhood and revelations brings up a lot of the first civilization and they gave you the bare bones to understand it they came before they used humans as slaves they died they tried to make things work none of that is elaborated on and it's not really needed to be elaborated on because they give you enough that you're not going to question very much other than go that would be cool to know more about you know like like mm. what you want shake Origins, yeah. Odyssey, and Valhalla actually answers what all that was. And they actually reveal a lot of that finally. But the reason why those threads kind of like got loosely introduced and not very well explained is because those games weren't supposed to exist. And I feel like that happened to Kingdom Hearts. The, all, all those 3DS games weren't supposed to exist. So all these additional characters and other things that happened, and all, none of it was supposed to exist. And it all comes together well, but it's all over the place. 
I think from Birth by Sleep on was supposed to be like stuff that was explained like maybe in a cutscene or something. Yeah. Because like the the ending for two shows Aqua, Terra, and Ventus like picking up the Keyblades and getting ready to fight Xehanort. Yeah, and that should have been it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that could have been explained in, like, Kingdom Hearts 3's, like, opener or something, like, who they are. Because that's basically a plot of three, is to go and get those three guys. Yeah. And <laughs> make them good. <laughs> but, uh, he, but he, he, he didn't, he wasn't able to make three. So he's like, okay, we'll just take this one plot point, I guess, and make a prequel on it. So it's not affecting the, the timeline. And then, but it does. He had, the he had to make line. the next thing, right? Well, and, the, and, right. I mean, I'm a, and, we're we're both agreeing that story got all over the place. I didn't even finish three because <laughs> by the time I caught up on everything, I'm like, I don't even care anymore, man. Just kill Xehanort. I, <laughs> I loved Kingdom Hearts one. I loved Kingdom Hearts two. I even played Chain of Memories when it first came out on Game Boy Advance. I love that I game. Didn't play, I didn't play three. I've replayed one and two because I enjoy that part of the story so much. But like. I watched YouTube videos for like hours and hours and hours trying to figure out what the heck was going on with Kingdom Hearts. Honestly, I feel like Kingdom Hearts would have benefited from cryptic storytelling because they mm. tried to answer everything. I mean, they tried, and it just the, got way too much. Yeah, you know, like they, <laughs> they tried the cryptic stuff with like the Xehanort files and stuff like that. Yeah, but it was not enough. No, um, I play. I've hundred percented every Kingdom Hearts game. Uh, it's, the only series, <laughs> it's the only series I've 100%ed. Um, and 3 was very disappointing until the DLC. Uh, but I, at the same time, I, I understand because I know what happened with Nomura. Because yeah. I know he's been pulled around from one project to another because he's like he's their fixer guy, <laughs> basically. Yeah. I know, and I agree. I, I'm, a, I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan, and I still haven't even finished the original 3 because it was just so disappointing to me. But I, I am also not like giving them crap for it. I know what happened. It just kept going. And they also had to deal with the Disney back and forth. And it, right. it was just a project in itself to deal with. Um, but I do feel like that game would have done a lot better with a lot more vague information instead of trying to explain everything. Because you had the Heartless, the Nobodies, the, you know, like, and then we had the Organization 13, and then we had Xehanort, we had the, the three, Ventus, Aqua, and like, and, and all of this. And then so, for some reason, Roxas is also a nobody, but not a nobody, but he's like this weird thing. And he, then Shion's he's a this nobody other of part. A nobody. Yeah, he's a no, and then <laughs> Shion existed as well. And, he just kept adding and adding and adding and adding. And you know what it reminds me of? When I did that D&D game for Death Metal, where we were doing a D&D game and my, car my players were Booster Gold and Blue Beetle and they were trying to go through. And everyone was enjoying what I created. Like They're all enjoying the story of the Death Metal. So I kept trying to extend it by throwing new bad guys at him and new plot points at him to the point where even I was like, I don't even know where I'm going with this at this point. We need to, st we need to end. That's kind of what it reminds me of what happened with Kingdom Hearts, where he, like you said, he wanted to keep everyone interested. So he just kept throwing right. another plot point in there. And by the time you get to three, you're like, I don't even know where we're at. Like, <laughs> I have so many villains. So this gets back to, uh, back to that kind of TV versus movie discussion we were having. But I think the best stories are the ones that are written with an ending in mind. Yes. And I think the reason... The best television show I think that exists, but, well, I mean, obviously Sopranos is up there, The Wire is up there, but Breaking Bad, from the moment Breaking Bad was created, he knew exactly where the story was going. Yeah. And because of that, he was able to pace it out properly. I think what, what happens with a lot of these games is that you start it, you ask the questions, you don't really have the answers, you just start kind of telling the story, then you're introducing new questions, and then you try to wrap it up, but then the story just manages to get away from you somehow. Mm -hmm. You know you know what a great example of that is? And, it, and I feel like it's a very similar situation with like Destiny and Kingdom Hearts and these stories that are being written as they're going, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Game, Game of Thrones started with what appeared to be a very clear focus, and by the time you get to where HBO took over, you're like, they're literally writing this as they go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Game of Thrones versus A Song of Ice and Fire is two completely separate things. But at this yeah. point, I don't think anybody thinks uh, George R. R. Martin knows how to end it. Right. Like, that, I think that's why he hasn't at, come out because he doesn't you're looking know. You're at A Song of Ice and Fire and it's not done. 
because he right. doesn't know what the ending is. I love when he came out and he's like, it's going to be similar to the show. If it is, finish it. Like, finish here's the book. The thing. <laughs> here's the thing, and I might get some hate in the comments for this. I didn't have an issue with what happened in the ending of Game of Thrones. I had an issue with how it was executed. They rushed it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm in the same boat with you on that one. I didn't think it was a terrible ending. At that point, I was like, we're not going to get an ending that's going to please everyone. So just end it somehow. It's just rushed. That was the issue I had with it. It felt rushed. Like we could have gotten easily a couple more episodes in there. Not even a couple yeah. more episodes. There should have been another season. Yeah. Uh, no, th Spoil there really should. Because like she lands between Spoilers. when she lands and when... <laughs> This did this come out like five years ago? Yeah, yeah and there's still some people I'll hate you for it. Spoilers. No, actually, um, I, I will say this. I will say that you can say spoilers, but I will say this: the people that I know that didn't watch Game of Thrones have zero interest to watch it now because of how bad mm, the ending is supposed that's true. to be. They they're like, I'm not even watching it. I hear it's terrible. I'm like I, I can't argue. It's not that great. Like, <laughs> right. it wasn't bad, but you're not going to be excited when you get to it. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but from like when she lands to when she turns, like they've been foreshadowing that she was going to be the villain of the series from at least season three, but probably season one, if you're being completely honest. I didn't really see her but, becoming a villain until so question. until season six was when, so when she burned the town down to free the slavers, the free the slaves. Yeah, what? yeah she uh, that was going to be my point. You just. Yeah. You right but, underneath you. That that was when I was like, she's going evil. She's gonna do whatever yeah, like, she has to do to get like, her meat. She's badass, and I'm like, she just I, burned a bunch of people alive for I no mean, reason instead guess, of like. I guess I am like, well, they're slavers, and there's right, but she worse didn't. She didn't just show. go in. She didn't just like grab the three slavers and be like, all right, these three we kill. Everyone else is a no go. She was like, burn their castle. What about the cooks? What about, what about the stable boys? They're slaver cooks. It's slaver, <laughs> slaver boys. They all have slaves. Well, every, every she completely blood. burns down Astapor, and then she enslaves, <laughs> like, she crucifies everybody in Marine. Yeah. I mean, I know we're getting off topic, but, like, the point is... Well, is no, that, we're not like, really, though, because we're talking about no, linear yeah. versus cryptic storytelling. And, right. and, and Game of Thrones did very cryptic storytelling for, like, four seasons. The whole time you're like dragons. White is a White Walker even real? <laughs> so that, that's why I didn't. I never considered Danny a bad person because like, well, the White Walkers are the bad people. Focus on the White Walkers. <laughs> why are you still killing each other in King's Landing? There's White Walkers. <laughs> and then they wrapped it up in an episode. Oh, it was the worst thing ever. I know. <sighs> That the White Walker should have been a season, <laughs> like, and then Danny should have been a season. That's, exactly. That's, that's what it should exactly. have been. Exactly. If, if they had broken it up and made the White Walkers an actual threat that they dealt with, and then all of a sudden they're like, wait a second, we have an insane dragon queen who's willing to burn down cities, let loose. Like, then you're like invested in both of those stories. But the Night King or whatever his name was, just being dropped like and like no. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we're now we're really on like just r ragging on what we hated about Game of Thrones. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> back to our topics on hand, though. Right. Um, I think we can all agree we like the style that Destiny is going for. Uh, I mm -hmm. like how it's handled in Pokemon Resident Evil. I like how it was handled in Control and Near. I do feel Destiny has gotten better since Shadowkeep, but pre-Shadowkeep, to me at least, it felt like they were literally writing as they're going. And I don't know when they sat down after scrapping the original plot and said, here's what's happening. But it just felt like up until then, they were just throwing whatever they could at the wall that might, might seem cool to a space-faring situation. Whatever might sell a DLC. Yeah. I, well, honestly, I think it was panic. I think they were their lore team was just panic writing their way and they figured out a way to make it work so that everything is now making sense right the well now it is and i agree now, now we're finally page. coming to some conclusions and yep. we're getting somewhere i i think they got lucky i mean they're good they're talented well, writers we don't know if they got lucky yet it's not done well, <laughs> once well, light <laughs> once lightfall comes out and it's the resolution we'll know if it's a game of thrones <laughs> is it a kingdom hearts <laughs> or is it a Final Fantasy fourteen where we then all go, eight years incredible plot. This is amazing. You know, like. Yeah. 
until it resolves, we don't know. Like we're we're going on to a, 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 a gear like this. Can we get to go to the moon? Today. Oh wait, we already went to the moon. <laughs> I will say, I will say though, there is something to be said for games like God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn that just yeah. sit down and they tell you their story and then say, "Hey, come back in three to four years." I think both. Like you, you know, need kind of both. I like yeah. God of War is very straightforward. I like Horizon Zero Dawn style. Because they told you every core answer you needed. And if you wanted to get a little bit extra on the original character and where the world came from, there was that little bit extra you could get, but none of that was needed. You could just sit and play that game and it have en- every answer you did need. It enriched the game. Yes. But it yeah. wasn't necessary no. at all. all. All it did was man, like make you feel like, man, this world, like I, I want to know more about it. Like, That's how Control handles it. If you haven't played Control, you do that because they do their great. There's a very linear plot that comes to a conclusion, and you're like, I'm, I'm satisfied. But if you start reading the files and looking into the extra things, you're like, this world is amazing. I want more Control. Like, isn't, <laughs> isn't Control in the Alan Wake universe? Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. I played Alan Wake. I like that, so I'll probably need to try Control. If you like the concept of SCP, you'll like that game. Coder doesn't know what SCP is. Anyway. <laughs> Secure, contain, Secure, protect. Secure, contain, protect. Yeah. yeah, okay. So anyway, guys, uh, what is your opinion? Let us know in the comments down below. Which type of storytelling do you prefer? Do you prefer the super cryptic, Dark Souls, Bloodborne? And I know there's more games, but those are the two more, uh, like, AAA obvious titles that everyone knows. Do you like that blending of the style? The transmedia, the additional files, Nier, Control, Resident Evil, Destiny, Pokemon, um, do you, or do you prefer very straightforward God of War, Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, where you just play and there's a plot and it unfolds and you don't have to question too much? And what did you think of the Game of Thrones ending? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and how many panels are going to fall off my wall next week? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us today. This has been Absolutely PlayStation and Steam Gamers with Benny, Coda, and Shank. And we will see you next week right here.